there are statements in football that really mean more than just words, right? And there's statements that players say that really indicate where that team is heading. And, you know, we heard Joe Mixon come out and say the reason why he took a pay cut is because, you know, he wanted to help out the team. But here is some more statements from Joe Mixon that really paints why this team and this culture for this team this year is going to go win a Super Bowl. Let's talk about it. So, in July, Mixon and the Bengals agreed to restructure his four-year contract extension. Uh, he signed in 2020. According to roster management system, his new cash is $5.8 million, nearly $3 million less than he was before. Mixon, in his first comments of training camp, said, The bigger picture. And those three words, in all honesty, means more than anything else someone could say. Because, again, keep in mind, right? The end goal for us is to go win a Super Bowl. Everyone wants to get paid. Everyone wants to make a bazillion dollars, right? That's just life. That's just humanity. But to look at it as, listen, I want to get paid, but I also want to help my team around me go win a Super Bowl, go finish the job, and get the job done. That's a type of mentality that is unmatched by anything else. He said this, I see the task at hand, and we're trying to build, and in order to keep other players here and pieces here, sometimes you have to sacrifice. Mixon told the team's website in article published Wednesday, I felt like this year was the year to sacrifice for a Super Bowl team we can potentially be. And keep in mind, it's not just each year, he's also... Um, took a pay cut next year. So he took a pay cut over the two years, so we're going to have more money for the cap these next two years. And the money that he went ahead and took a pay cut with, that directly went to um, Trey Hendrickson's ex uh, one-year extension. So because he took a pay cut, right away, we got Trey Hendrickson for another year. He said, uh, we agree on a number with great uh, compensation this year with incentives. Off my last deal, I feel like they allowed me to work and be able to make the money back. I know that we're a better football team when Joe is here, so I was happy to see that, Joe Burrow said last week with Mixon's new contract. And that's why I know a lot of sports analysts and a lot of, you know, uh, sports media says that Joe's going to be the highest paid quarterback in history and he's going to go take the craziest contract possible. And he's going to do what, you know, Herbro just did with his contract. But I don't think that's the case. Because, again, just like Joe Mixon iterated here, and we see and hear the same stuff with Joe Burrow when he's guaranteeing that we're going to be able to keep Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. And as he said, we're going to keep everyone. It really spells volumes that, especially because Joe Burrow knows, his contract structure and how the money he gets directly impacts who we're able to keep and who we're not able to keep. At the end of the day, without any bullcrap here, you know, if you have a, a quarterback on a rookie contract, you can keep everyone. Let's, let's be honest, right? A rookie contract means that you can do pretty much you can sign this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. But the problem is, once your quarterback is making more than 14% of your salary cap, you can't keep everyone. You have to let people go. You have to, you know, build through the draft. You have to get some budget-type guys. You have to, you know, maybe restructure some contracts to keep this guy, that guy. And it's a part of football. Unless you have a quarterback like Joe or a running back like Mixon here who are going to sit there and say, no, we're going to keep everyone we're going to structure our contracts to do that. Now, I'm not expecting T. Higgins to structure his contract to, you know, do the same concept. And again, like I said, this might not ever work with Jamar Chase. He might never structure his contract. But that's why it's so important and amazing how, again, Burrow and Mixon, how they both are structuring their contracts so that other players can get fed, right? Can get that big money. And again, Joe knows he's going to, both Joes know they're going to get a lot of money in the future. Like, obviously, Joe Burrow knows he's going to get a, probably a 10-year contract. He's going to make more money than probably anyone in the NFL. 
especially, you know, against a couple of Super Bowls. There's a lot of money to be made off the field. Like, yes, I know everyone likes to talk about the contract, five, six, seven year deal contract, 300 million. But off the field, there's a lot of money to be made. And the more Super Bowls you ring, the more money you bring, right? So keep that in mind. And for Joe Mixon, same concept. You're, if you're a Super Bowl winning, you know, team and you're the star running back, it's a lot of money to bring, right? And again, it's sponsorships, deals, advertisements, period. But with that being said, you know, it does come down to Joe Burrow. And that's why, you know, hearing statements like, oh, we're guaranteed to bring everyone together or guaranteed to bring everyone back. That's that speaks a lot of volumes about this team and how this year is and how next year is going to be. I wouldn't be surprised if we won the next two Super Bowls, in all honesty. You know, if you listen to my videos about the training camp and how our training camp is going so far, we're, our of all players are really stepping up and becoming superstars. Even with the fact we don't have Joe Burrow out there. We still hear how uh, DJ Ivy, our seventh round pick, and actually Mike Hilton said that his new nickname is Poison Ivy, which I freaking love. He's stepping up. He's becoming a monster. He had, I think, what, three interceptions and a lot of pass deflections so far in training camp in a week. A seventh round pick is going one-on-one -on -one with our receivers and actually doing pretty dang well. Charlie Jones is doing well. They're implementing more in Miles Murphy into the offense. Even Andre is doing well, who's a sixth round pick. So, there are a lot of these guys that... In all honesty, you know, you might think, oh, yeah, these guys aren't going to do anything. These guys aren't any special. <clears throat> They're doing really good. And even though, yes, Jackson Comet wasn't amazing in his training camp so far, Jonah Williams has been pretty dang good in training camp so far. So, it's a special team, guys. And I will definitely tell you right now, our secondary is looking good. Jordan Battle has gotten as many special teams reps as we will. I mean, sorry. Uh, defensive reps as we really wanted him to. But Nick Scott is going out there and playing good. Dax Hill too. This is a team of destiny. And it's going to be scary to see who has to play us this year. And this mentality, this leadership, this just essence about this team is why this team is so scary. Because it's hard to stop a team when they're, when they're this mentality. Like, you know what? It's us against the world, right? Usually with teams and players, you have guys that are selfish or arrogant. They want this. They want this. They want this. Nah, this team is something else. But definitely tell me down below your thoughts and opinions, guys. Make sure to like and subscribe button for daily videos on the Cincinnati Bengals. Keep in mind, guys, we're going to be live tonight for the Hall of Fame game. Peace out.